all those who joined us online and all those uh, here at MMA. Shortly, uh, we'll be commencing our program. I uh, request you all to stick to the COVID protocol. Those who have arrived here at uh, MMA, both in the lobby as well as in the hall, please wear your masks. Uh, there are a lot of chairs that are vacant. Please maintain your social distancing. Uh, may I now invite uh, Mr. Maran. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, I'm just inviting uh, the other distinguished speakers. Yes. I are. request Mr. Rajesh and Ms. Meena to take their place on the dais, please. Group captain, uh, yeah, please, you're most welcome. Please welcome them with a round of applause. Group captain R. Vijay Kumar heads the Madras Management Association. Uh, all of you are aware. Um, he's been with the Air Force for about 30 years and then joined uh, the MMA as executive director, headed MMA since 2007. He's a recipient of the President's Visit to Seva Medal. May I now request him to deliver the welcome address this evening. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good evening, all the viewers watching this program live from all our social media portals, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. And uh, yes, you know, the situation is quite bad outside. That's why we thought uh, the interactions will be good. Our broadcast is much better when we do it from the auditorium. Uh, that's why we got a very, very small crowd, about 30 people, 40 people, less than 40 people total. Uh, but large number of viewers watching this program online. As usual, you continue to log in. We'll try and bring you as many good program. And the good news now, what I heard uh, is that by 26th April or 27th April, the uh, the last day is happening in Chennai. Uh, it will become, the pandemic will come to almost the end. It will become endemic and uh, I hope things will become normal and get along. And uh, before I will formally welcome the distinguished uh, speakers for this evening, let me tell you what's happening in MMA next few days so that if you're missed in your inbox, you don't uh, miss this great event what we specially brought it for you. On Monday the 24th, we have a discussion on the theme, Demystifying Career Growth. We have for outstanding corporate leaders, uh, Gobal Subramaniam, Chairman, Escape Limited, Unikishan Managing Director of uh, San Gobain, then Katsushi Minobi is the Executive Vice Chairman from Japan, uh, Kobelco Industry, then Arul Shanmugavelu is the author of the book, uh, French Fries, and Mr. Shivaraman, former LNT Vice President. This is the event which I think not to be missed even. Please do come and uh, join us on the 24th evening, online at 6 p.m. And it's totally online. And on the 27th, we have uh, Dr. Mr. Mananathan talking to us on traits of successful entrepreneur. His MMA chapter event. We also bring this event to all our members of MMA only webinar. And on Sunday the 30th, uh, we have the second Narayan Pons Veterans Endowment Lecture. With uh, we are again an outstanding speakers lined up with Jerry Rao, founder and uh, former CEO of <coughs> Emphasis, Tagi Tagarajan. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yagi Tagarajan, former regional director, and also Atul Vora will be leading the conversation. Then on Monday, 31st January, you have Kritika Balasubramanyam. She'll be talking to us on Women Business Forum, discuss on the theme. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Then on the 10th of uh, February, also we aligned up quite a number of events. We are doing an event along with uh, Fiki <coughs> Flow uh, on startup series again. Then on the 10th, uh, we have ethical business. Why ethical awareness uh, is the block of sustainability, blocking sustainability. We have Dr. Manon from Indian Oil, again, uh, Sharada Jagan, Managing Director of Sanmar, and uh, Jay Devan, Executive Director of uh, Indian Oil, will be joining us. Then 15th of Feb, we have Leadership Sastra, Lessons from Indian History. Again, we have three outstanding corporate leaders. Uh, Pradeep Chakravati will be talking about this book, what is written, and R. Sheshai, Vice Chairman of Indija Group. Venki Raju Kobal is the Managing Director of Indian Terrain. And SL Narayanan is a group financial officer of Sun Group. So we are lined up quite a bit of program till March. I won't take too much of your time. 
and uh, coming to today's event read and grow uh, it's a very popular series uh, uh, this has been designed very thoughtfully by three outstanding leaders uh, who really put in the, the labor of love they put in a lot of time and energy to bring month after month uh, the excellent theme and excellent book they pick up and excellent speakers they bring month after month so that you all get the habit of reading if you don't get habit of reading at least listen to that and i think i must place on record uh, my our sincere appreciation for the support extended by rajesh tinivasan sangeeta sumesh and babu krishnamurthy they are the one i think there is there's a big round of applause because they are the people who are putting together this event month after month because we strongly believe you have to be a leader you have to be a great leader because i've seen many of the great leaders who have come to mma they're all voracious readers they're so knowledgeable because you read and uh, i can tell you you become so knowledgeable automatically your all your other things will improve your communication your writing capacity i know that personally i experience uh, you read more books you write very well you speak very well that's why i'm uh, urge upon all the number of students who are watching the program and others who are we have physically do read at, at least make sure that you pick up over that every month at least read two books for your benefit because we want to not only uh, do the thing we want to also put in place the right mechanism for you to do that in the mma library we have added more than 3000 books for your benefit actually for members of course uh, and uh, we have more 1.4 million research papers picked up from more 320 universities around the world we are placing the library for you to read in addition to that we have got all the magazines we got the latest harvard business review books you want only hard copy feel and read please come to the library we got a lovely library very good uh, air conditioning system good seating arrangements nice place uh, come enjoy read because this is a opportunity which you want to create to each one of the members continuum of that is the event what we start the series read and grow and uh, today let me have the privilege of uh, welcoming our distinguished uh, panelists for this evening mr rajesh tinivasan marketing branding and business growth strategies he will be leading the conversation with our two great leaders of our time and mr maran nagarajan is the ceo of car technologies and ms meena shabriya is associate vice president of brand alliance and pvr cinema pvr cinema you all know i think uh, you don't need any introduction and uh, he'll be leading a conversation on another very interesting theme the lean startup uh, and what they are going to really discuss is how uh, constant innovation creates radically successful businesses mma uh, we focus quite a bit on entrepreneurship and also uh, the startup series we started a startup series which is very very popular it will be it's unbelievable we get over 20000 people watch this program every month we bring the last month we got chai king uh, uh, he came and spoke and uh, again agnigul spoke on uh, a couple of months back from it research park how he's going to really send the rocket to the usa then zeroda uh, nitin uh, he came and spoke on zeroda you all know one of the finest guy who doing on online marketing then ether energy so like that we got some outstanding startup every month they come and speak to us because we pay a lot of attention to startup series because we firmly believe i think each one of us do not look for a job should be a job giver than the job seekers that with this in mind let me once again welcome our distinguished uh, panelists for this evening uh, gentlemen who joined us on online sir we, we are missing you here but i am quite sure we'll catch up with you very soon uh, mr maran nagarajan uh, very warm welcome to you and next time when you come you must visit mma i don't know where you visited uh, we really look forward to receiving you at mma i can assure you uh, we have a great ambience uh, we also give uh, while food for thought we also give good food for stomach our refreshments are very very good i can assure you that thanks once again very warm welcome to all the people who have joined us this uh, evening in spite of all the thing uh, not to worry you have to live with it and you have to take the precaution i only request you keep wearing the mask only exception to the speakers uh, so that uh, i mean they are also well social uh, distance they maintain thanks so much have a great evening i'm quite sure it's going to be a very very enriching thought provoking evening over to you guys and before that i just be briefing this thank you sir for setting the tone uh, this evening uh, let me have the pleasure of introducing all the three uh, distinguished speakers and then hand over the session to mr rajesh uh, like group can major kumar cover rajesh srinivasan drives the session every third month and uh, thanks for bringing lovely speakers month after month every time rajesh is a modern marketing uh, branding and business growth strategist is the founder of mindful marketing comes with over 20 years of experience in real estate hospitality and advertising industry he is an alumnus of the indian institute of materials management lucknow and is author of two books growth nuggets and marketing success formula he is joined this evening at mma by uh, ms uh, maran sorry uh, ms meena chabria 
she comes with about 12 years of experience at PFR, PBR itself. And she's done it all out there. Coming from a normal family, she was married at the age of 16. And by 19, she was a single parent with two kids. And today she's grown to this extent. So she deserves a very big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. She took up teacher's training course, worked in a, uh, in a clinic with autistic children for some time. Then she joined INOX and from there finally to PVR and kickstarted a success story. Pursuing currently a PGPX program at UCLA, she's already done management courses from IIM Raipur and ISB as well. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us this evening. And we have Mr. Maran who joined us online. Thank you, Mr. Maran. As the group that Mujay Kumar mentioned, we are missing your presence this evening here, but we'll see you soon at MMA, I'm sure. He's founded Car Technologies along with his friends and uh, college mates. And currently his, his company has got 700 strong professionals uh, delivering phenomenal programs. CEO of Car Technologies, he helps his clients transform digitally by implementing ERP. And um, as an Indian investor, he likes to stay connected with the latest technology startups. I think he's the right person for this evening's uh, dialogue, uh, which is again on startup. And as a Tamil Nadu governing council member of NASCOM and ex-governing council member of the uh, TIE, you're all aware of TAI, he's enjoying promoting entrepreneurship. Thank you very much for joining us, all three of you. Now I hand over the session to Mr. Rajesh to take it forward from here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Captain. Uh, good evening, all of you. They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So I have slightly reframed this and kept this as a guiding philosophy for me, for my personal growth. A book a month keeps the knowledge worries away. Uh, and this has been my guiding philosophy for the last seven years. What I do is I generally pick up one book every month, mostly nonfiction related to what I, what I do and study that one book the whole month, chart down all the key principles, concepts, frameworks. I go and listen uh, to the author keynotes in YouTube. I read quotes from that book. So this practice has literally helped me to go beyond my comfort zone and learn a lot of things and become a better person. So in that sense, um, I thank uh, Captain Vijay Kumar, uh, Captain Venkatra, uh, Venkatraman of uh, MMA, and then the person who has conceptualized this Read and Grow initiative, Sangeeta Shankaran Sumesh, along with Babu Krishnamurti. I thank all of you for feeding my curiosity towards uh, reading books and went out all those things uh, in, in, in the form of sharing. So coming back to today's book, The Lean Startup, the book was returned in the year 2011 by Eric Ries. He founded at that point of time in 2002, for two years, he was working in a startup firm in Silicon Valley. Eventually, after a lot of um, strategic development, product development, after a lot of efforts, hard effort, uh, hard work, the startup eventually failed. Even though they had a brilliant team, a great product, it was actually a social sharing network, the product which they were developing in 2001. It eventually failed, even though they had all the, all the tech product team resources and all those things. He eventually went back to the boardroom, took Steve Blank. He is a famous a thought leader in Silicon Valley. Uh, he is the father of customer development process. So he took advice from Steve Blank and in this next startup, IMVU, he has applied all these principles. These principles which he has shared in the lean startup, he, he emulated this from the lean startup sorry, the lean manufacturing practices of Toyota management system. So he emulated all those principles and applied it in a business setting. Most often what happens is, particularly in the startup environment, the environment is mostly uncertain. It means we do not know who our customers are really, what they really need, what product features we need to build, how much money, what 
type of routine we need to build at the back end most of the times since the environment is uncertain we do not know i'm particularly talking about the startup startups not the not the established businesses even though established businesses also face these kind of challenges day in and day out so what the advice which eric rees has received from steve blank has opened his eyes traditionally what happens in a business is we do the product development process for 6 months 8 months maybe even for a year and then eventually come to know that there is no demand for the product in the market so the key idea which is shared in this book is the biggest risk an entrepreneur can take is just to know that there is no demand for the product for his product in the market after developing the full product so he, he understood this based on his experiment uh, experience and came out with the idea called build measure and learn feedback loop this is the central theme of the whole book so even usually what happens is if you notice i usually uh think about this an analogy we generally notice a duck graciously sailing at the bottom of the lake but we forget to notice the furious pedaling it does beneath the water so even in startups if you notice we see all the stories like funding that happens uh unicorns Uh, all those fancy stuff we see all those things in the media but what really made these entrepreneurs to become successful this principle this book has shared all those principles so that is why i got attracted to the principles and concepts of this book so primarily the central theme as i have told is the build measure and learn feedback group area uh, uh, feedback loop Eric Ries the author advises entrepreneurs startup owners or even students he, he clearly says this book is not just for entrepreneurs he says entrepreneurs are everywhere maybe you are a student who is trying to do something in your college your your initiate a, a small ngo initiative which you are trying to do this these principles can be applied so coming back to the build measure learn feedback loop he says before developing a full fledged product develop a test your hypothesis test your assumptions for example uh, i am i am a startup owner i am trying to build let's say a product um for senior citizens okay it's a new product it's not available in the market so rather than developing a full fledged product he says create a small prototype and throw your idea to the market and see how they respond he calls it as minimum viable product mvp so i'll give you an example which he has shared in the book the ceo of a company dropbox you must have heard about the file sharing app called dropbox it's a very famous uh, application but what this the ceo of the company did before launching the product is he created a small video explaining the features of the product he shot it in his mobile phone and just he rolled out that video in the social media platforms and youtube overnight he has got around 8000 to 9000 registrations for this product but the interesting part is he has not had developed the product at all so he calls this as a video minimum viable product video mvp so what the ceo of dropbox has understood even before developing his product is one there is a demand for my product in the market because 8000 people have registered so there is minimum traction so if 8000 people registers for my product at least i can convert 500 to 1000 people into paid membership these are some of the measurements he has done so one first thing he has built a prototype of his product second things through second thing the through that prototype is able to measure whether his product 
will have traction in the market or not. That is the learning which he has got. So in learning, what happens is he says the primary goal of a startup in a scientific approach is to learn, learn, learn. His, his um, mentor, Steve Blank, has created a concept called, it's a very interesting concept called get out of the building. If, a, if you want to really succeed in the business, don't ever take any decisions uh, inside the boardroom. Don't work on assumptions because what happens when you are an owner of an owner of an idea, what happens? We get carried away by that idea, right? So don't get carried away by that. Go get out of the building and learn real time. This is what Toyota does to develop some uh, breakthrough car, uh, car brands like Prius. So Steve Blank advised Toyota also. He, in fact, he even emulated all these lean, man, lean principles from Toyota, Toyota's management system. So the first framework which, um, which you need to understand from the book is build, measure, and learn feedback loop. And then he shares three ideas for growth. How do you grow a company? How, do, how, do you, how can you grow your startup? Number one, through paid advertising, you can grow. Number two, he calls something as viral engine of growth. He calls this idea of engine of growth. Second one is viral engine of growth. When you say viral engine of growth, what happens is if you notice all these social media platforms and communication tools like WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, they grow rapidly in two, two to three years, they touch billions of users. How they do it without spending, we don't see advertisements of Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp in conventional mass media, right? So how do they grow? They, it, it, the idea is called viral coefficient. Every customer recruits another customer. If I use WhatsApp, I'll tell my friend just to uh, I, I, need, I need to have my friend inside the communication platform to, to effectively communicate to him, right? So naturally, as a customer, I do the recruitment process for the company. That's the beautiful thing in viral uh, engine of growth. This happens primarily in social platforms, particularly in social networks. They call this as network effects. So that is the second type of growth. Third type of growth, which he talks about, it's called sticky growth engine. Stickiness means you, you help the customer, you, you travel along with the customer, you help them so much, you make him delightful so that he sticks with you for a longer period of time and buys more from you, buy more products from you. He shares an example of Gillette, where we buy the product, use it and reuse it for continuously for, uh, for, for more time in our life, right? So these are the three type of growth engines is share. So what I'll do is I will pass the baton uh, to Meena and she will share her experience further on these ideas. Maybe once after she finishes, we'll go to Maran and then we will take up some questions and then move forward over to Meena. Audio check. Can you all hear me? Maran, I missed you today. I think I should catch up for a coffee with you because I was going on looking at your profile in LinkedIn. So sad that I couldn't catch up with you on person. Uh, but thank you for being there online. Can't hear you, Maran. I think your audio is... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. Truly, I too miss the uh, online offline presence. Yeah. So... Great. Nevertheless, I got a coffee option with you. Without you inviting me, I'm still going to be there. <laughs> Great. Uh, so you know when I started reading this book uh, the only thing that which was going on in my mind and sorry I hope you all know Tamil because I'm a pure Tamilian I'll start from there and before we go to the Tamil I just want all of you to pick your phones and please follow me on LinkedIn okay my LinkedIn ID is Meena Chavria it's no marketing no publicity but you should write good and bad. And if you liked it, you should tell me you liked it. And if you didn't like it, you should tell me why didn't you like it so that I improve the next time, right? And I'm seeing you all so busy in the phone. I thought I'll take a moment to make you all come back to life. Okay, so I was thinking uh, in the typ uh, typical uh, 
Tamil uh, language, and then I will translate this to English. Appaway periyal alla sorna engineering padchko abrin. Right? In your old and traditional days, people always used to study. Tell study engineering or study doctorate, but engineer would be a bigger option. And you know, I was thinking, how can I now sit and create a product? I don't even have that thought because it's just instigating you that connect saying so far the world has moved on with so many product tests, failures, startup. You know, the lessons are so, so overwhelming. So that's what I, I really felt. And though the book is written in 2011, I'm sure Eric couldn't have known how the pandemic is going to hit. I had a little different thought process alongside with the book, which is also a part of point of view for the uh, culture of any organization or any organization, not, not just startup. So hence, I am going to put it in a simple elaboration and I quote this. Organizations are started with passion, but it runs with discipline, whether it's a startup or any organization. So I was just trying to re relate, correlate and see. Your hirings will need some risk takers, some large hearted individuals who are always present and should not feel insecure about learning, de-learning and joining of some uh, juniors who will show the way to us. Like this is something I really practice in the environment of PBR, well-established brand, you know, been in the industry for so many years, but see how the pandemic just restarted us. Now we're looking at so many other options. The third point I would like to talk about is all about this. There should be individuals who respect the management's decision, going back to the startup thing, because the first page, the first line says, just do it attitude. You know, I could start from there and think, how will I just do it? Because I need to have all the things correct. This event, me this event means whatever the position is I have to swallow a pill and say, yes, I'm ready for this thought process. So let me begin from, uh, from the part of the uh, book I like. Though Eric uh, learned uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, success stories after he created an unsuccessful venture, he took this learning as a very good documentation for others to teach. I think a teacher was uh, born out of a failure and this has helped many of us frankly even if uh, four weeks before you would have asked me to read a book and say i would have said you i'm not a studious student i have to sit and read and then come back with pointers it's a tough one but i think after this i got a good practice i documented everything for my knowledge and for others so here i would just want to stop by a moment and thanks mma and rajesh to you know invest this skill in me now it's a very important skill. Thank you, Captain and everybody. Uh, so when Sir was talking, Rajesh was talking about uh, how I, uh, Eric's, uh, you know, instant uh, messaging uh, feature was failing and when he felt he should have done it six months before and he should have tested the product, where was the gap he could fail? How could he uh, would have processed it better? What was that? It was just a, uh, you know, a kind of wave which was going on in his mind. And when he, of course, met his mentor and you gave him life lessons to learn. And somewhere, I think we also start learning a bit from there more. He built an uh, uh, alternative option uh, where the costume, consumers gives him a feedback saying, this is not okay, but if you're giving me unknown people's link to select, I'm okay with it. So the instant messenger, what he developed for the consumers was not accepted, but the feedback of consumers, which was given, was so good that he was okay to work for it. When they build minimum uh, viable product, which again Rajesh quoted, but I re-quote this. I found uh, two examples very interesting. And uh, one of the, that which caught my eyes was Zappos and food on table. Amazing stories. Like, think about it. You're just walking and today by the time we have cameras and, you know, phones in hand, just click a picture, put it on the thing, see how many people are buying it and for that the numerous amount of manpower that guy used to say let's see whether this succeeds or not this proportionate value succeeds or not so hence in my uh, dictionary of trial i think this is something i will take it forever and you might might also want something but please try on yourself and see what sells from the book for you because you can't take everything but this was sold for me 
The second uh, example, which I spoke to you, put on table where they are uh, waiting for people to come and they get only one customer and then they wait for the other, then the other, the grocery list is increasing. It's a, uh, it's a app which helps you build your meal plan. I think meal plan, I think that was again a very good idea to work on. And I'm hopeful in future I could take up something from that because I'm truly a foodie. So I would like to kind of try that aspect of uh, learning from this book. Now, the real question is uh, how to build on the idea. And I'm just going to summarize this entire thing in five points, which I learned from the book. If you're building a product or if you're building anything which is going to be launched in the market, build a consumer experience vision, which means if you're building a product, please don't think it's for you, not for your friend. You know. If I go, I was telling this example to my team today. Tell me if I launch a idli shop and I tell you 50 rupees, you'll say, fortunately, it's boss. We have to buy it. No other option. But do just sit there and wear the hat of a consumer and say, will the consumer sit and buy a 50 rupees idli for me? I'm saying no. Take a learning, take a feedback from there. See whether it works for you. Not necessary that what worked for XYZ brand will work for you, which means you will have the uniqueness of your own product. You have to create and build something which is very different from the consumer's point of view. And I'm sure my friend Rajesh would agree to this. And uh, I quote on this, that they say, make the person, make your consumer pay for your, their uh, purpose. You know, we kind of, uh, because I'm a marketer too, whatever the consumer wants, like whatever I want today, I want a maybe lipstick or whatever, I will go and buy for it or pay for it. So build a product which the, Consumer can pay for it, which is very needed and which is wanted in the society. Identify critical assumptions there. Find out what's, you know, working, what's not, how it is going to work, how it's not going to work. And then build uh, two types of, uh, you know, early assumptions, which you can always see, like how Zappos did, built a simple assumption. Or then you can see a, so a smoke screen uh, marketing with a finished product and develop it even better. Any doubts? I am, I'm seeing a silence. So are you all in it? Are you all out of it? Sorry, am I boring you too much? Let's come back. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm taking the questions, but I still want to know because it keeps the audience going. Yeah. Release and measure with a small audience, like how Rajesh again said. I think Rajesh is a perfect book reader. I thought all the main points are covered, but he's covered most of it. So release in a small uh, group. Uh, now, when I say release in a small group, I think uh, I would like to talk about one example which comes from my industry, and I'm sure you guys would be interested to learn. It's that the question I get every time on the board, Netflix versus cinemas. Netflix has now built up an audience for all kind of content. It has bought every religion, every movie, every cast under a TV box, right? That way I give them credit. But cinema is an experience. So we all have that kind of thing. But can I do test trials and see a large volume movie, crores of rupees, whether it will work or not? Doesn't work. So that's the, maybe it's a product because I'm not a tech person. I can only talk to you about my life experiences to make you relate to it. Then pivot or persevere because uh, if the product is accepted, expected from the consumer, you're ticking all the first four points right, then either perceive with the product or if there's a tweak required or if you want to really do uh, some other thing, then see the pivot model again. So my two points to remember is that if it doesn't work, please don't stop. We should work even harder. So uh, fortunately, again, today I was uh, sitting with Vimal Gita Nandam. He is a two times TEDx speaker. He's writing my autobiography, which is releasing this year. And we were having a lot of conversations. And I said, Vimal, but why did you be a nomad? And you must find his profile somewhere. He's an amazing intellectual reader and writer and stuff. So he said, you know what, Meena, I built a product and I put my life behind it. Like it was a app which will uh, notify if there is someone sitting next to you, human form. And if you're watching a phone, the app will notify that a human is sitting next to you. Why don't you talk? And he felt that Facebook can just quickly add it as a feature and this could go out of his thing. And he felt not so okay to launch this. 
and from there he found traveling as his experience and he's a nomad who lives on vans and stuff but i was telling but don't you think there should have been another product because this is also brilliant for me like i would have never thought a human is sitting next to you please talk to him like we are built up on phones now but then he felt it didn't work for him and uh, this is your passion and i always say passion is emotion there's always emotion attached to passion and it's very important that we all capture it at the right time at the right age and uh, uh, to relate to this example again i was watching a documentary about bomani rani he is a uh, bombay actor and very uh, deep so he started his, he's 60 and he's saying i'm starting my career now maybe not a product development but still acting as a career it's a great way to start something which you lost so this is something i would like to always uh, think about and then another incident i'll like to say and then close this topic for discussion because this is another thing which made me think how are how are uh, uh, elders would have thought about it so me and my ceo gautam datta uh, we are fond of collecting artifacts we collect antique stuff and everything so today morning both of us were breaking our head for four hours i got him a lock the lock is uh, an animal like a dog or something and uh, the key has to go in the mouth and can you believe for four hours we were trying left right center and it's not working and then we called the and the guy who sold this artifact was didn't pick the call he was from russia and then i called him he said i'll send you the video and nothing had to be done we had to just push it when you push it the tail will come out so i was thinking are we also grain towards the same process of thinking same kind of thinking same follow up on the world of what others are doing following up let's create uniqueness and i was really amazed to see how are you know people at age 18 this this lock was 1820 how they would have thought about a mechanism which could have been so tough in terms of life so the product development for me from the key was so important as a part today because i was seeing a simple lock and key with a different view point it is not like a normal one so that's why i'm insisting on this so this is what i think brought to me and uh, uh, i don't know i did not want to give all the technical terms keeping in mind that we are all also want keeping in mind that i really want you all also to go through the journey of what rajesh and captain has uh, invested on me and i'm really thankful but i have one more thing which caught my eye is a very happy news first time and i'm going to be very proud of it talking in the linkedin tomorrow so did you get the invitation from mma yesterday all of you on your phone i want you to say yeah can you just read it once for me i think maran should do it maran did you get the invitation yesterday uh, unfortunately no <laughs> no we have received in the email okay this uh, one okay. yeah yeah you want me to read yeah yeah one second he's going to do that you know i first what's, what's time special in my that? life felt so good would you please read my name and maran's name and then my name I just want to end up the session with such a positive thought and very this? nice. Yeah, yeah. So read it now, please. Down. Emma May is delighted to. Yeah. This one. From uh, marketing, branding, and. Emma May is delighted to invite you to read and grow a discussion on the theme of the book, the Lean Startup: How Constant Innovation Creates Radically Successful Businesses. by mr rajesh trinivasan marketing branding and business growth strategist in conversation with mr maran nagarajan ceo car technologies and uh, mr <laughs> <laughs> miss uh, okay Please mr right you should tell it don't feel sad yeah, meena so chabria associate vice president brand alliance pvr cinemas so the <laughs> you should give a clap to me on this for the first time someone called me about about it's not about gender i felt so proud my team wrote to me ma'am i said no don't stop this this is the beginning for women being treated right for the first time and thank you mma and rajesh for this really i think real support to my uh, work in terms of respect i gained 100% and truly i think uh, do i do not want to see it as a mistake don't accept it in, as a mistake accept it as the respect you gave for my work and thing thank you so much rajesh tamil vanja pugalchi ani apdi solluvanga avoyar you know avoyar right avoyar vandu oru king oda pattaraiki pombodhu ange vandu nalla avar porke poradilla and and the king so avaroda war room ku pombodhu ange nariya tools la irukku adha eduthu paathittu 
உங்களோட டூல்ஸ் எல்லாம் ரொம்ப சூப்பரா இருக்கு பல 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 இருக்கு அவர் வந்து கோரிக்கே போறது இல்லைங்கிறத இவங்க சொல்லணும் பட் இஸ் அ கிங் ஈ கெனாட் ஷீ கெனாட் கம்யூனிகேட் தட் டு த கிங் ஸோ ஷீ செட் உங்களோட டூல்ஸ் எல்லாம் ரொம்ப புதுசா பல 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 இருக்கு ராஜா அப்படின்னு அவர் புரிஞ்சுக்கிட்டாரான் ஓகே thank you we will correct it <laughs> no no i'm serious about it we'll have a conversation okay. but thank we you we will so take much. it positively just thank just you. for a fun i no, said no i really felt for the first time after years really happy because the only person who called me uh, son every time is my father <coughs> and when this happened today i felt so proud about it great thank you thank you uh, now one thing which um, one one key take away from what meena has shared is the growth story of netflix initially for the next first 6 7 years that brand was invisible in the market they were doing lot of testing experimenting they 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 started with a dvd um, uh, and then slowly changed their product changed their market eventually after 6 7 years they become the mainstream um, company and eventually we all use netflix today so that's a good example which mina has quoted um then let's move to maran uh, welcome maran uh, you you have i think you have lot of things to share with us because you run a company which you have start up uh, started up on your own uh, please go ahead maran uh, maran and share your thoughts with us hey thank you rajesh um thank you very much and uh, thank you to mma for inviting me for the session today truly appreciate it and i really apologize for not being able to be there uh, offline it's just that uh, i am not in chennai today i could not travel i am in my native town so that's why i could not uh, travel and join the session as well uh, and i compliment you rajesh for picking up a wonderful book and taking this uh, for doing a panel discussion with the with the, the complete audience and uh, meena i think your characteristic style you left your imprint of uh, making sure uh, that they notice that mistake so and the vanja pogarchi ani very true but i think uh, as, as as he mentioned i think uh, it's it's a, it's a nice way of pointing out somebody put it on the chat as well it's a great way of pointing out that mistake taking it positively and making a remark about it truly appreciate it yeah um coming back uh, to the main theme of the book uh, as i said it's one of the one of the legendary books in my opinion so there are many books written all over this uh, in this multi, in many decades uh, like the there are only few books which stand out all the time and it is time tested so after almost a decade if you are picking it up and trying to understand the book that means it is stood for uh, this principle the principles have stood crossing a couple of decades uh, one such book is the good to great by jim collins and uh, it was written 25 years ago and any line you pick up and read it makes sense even today so uh, this lean startup of uh, eric ries is one such definitely one such book and it has truly uh, uh, he has captured all the necessary principles as to why uh, how a startup can succeed and um, the one primary message that i would like to give at least uh, what the message which truly makes a difference to us and which truly has made a difference to me personally in our organization is that the validated learning cycle that he talks about see the validated validated learning he clearly distinguishes between the learning and the validated learning see you can always claim a failure to be a learning cycle we glorify a failed process as a learning cycle but then you don't have to fail that's the whole message you don't need to fail how do you succeed without a failure because startup everybody thinks is more like an alchemy right alchemy is about you experiment and then suddenly trying to get some gold it's not a process of alchemy it's not some random process but there is truly a science behind a startup process how you can make any startup process successful is the science and whatever scientific is something which stands which can be repeated which can be tested and which can be proven again and again and again so that's why he gives the startup principle and this startup uh, 
need not any startup for that matter need not be a failure or any entrepreneurship pursuit need not become a failure how do you translate that possible failure into your success that's the recipe he gives and that's today is so valuable for anybody who is pursuing this entrepreneurial journey or this uh, startup thing and now today a startup is the thing and uh, anybody who pursues definitely need to understand this see as you pointed rajesh it uh, picks up the idea of uh, uh, lean startup from inspired by toyota uh, in the 80s you know they had they uh, they took to this market called this lean management principle so this whole lean startup is based on the lean management principle from the manufacturing industry what that truly talks about is waste elimination zero waste no waste it's not talking about see when when you talk about a waste you always connect it to the material waste wastage of goods wastage of things wastage of uh, products wastage of iron steel plastic that's what you think is a waste but in reality the human energy and the human effort wasted is the biggest waste when you waste the energy and the effort of the humans that's a that's a crime because you have built something as an as a startup as an entrepreneur you are investing the energy and the time of the people and then you take that to a failure which means you have wasted the human potential and the human time and energy of all these people so the endeavor of that entrepreneur or that startup or the leader should be truly to eliminate wasting the human effort நீங்க சொன்னீங்க இல்லையா அந்த தமிழ்ல நான் ஒரு எக்ஸாம்பிள் எடுக்கிறேன் நான் வந்து அவையாருக்கு போகல பட் நான் கரண்ட் டே சந்தானம்ல இருந்து ஒரு எக்ஸாம்பிள் கொடுக்குறேன் உங்களுக்கு ஒரு படத்துல கலகலப்புல பாத்தீங்கன்னா அவர் சொல்லுவாரு இதுக்கு பருத்தி கொட்ட குடோன்லயே இருந்திருக்கலாமே அப்படின்னு அதாவது என்னன்னா இந்த பருத்தி கொட்ட இங்க இருந்து அங்க எடுத்துருப்போம் அங்க இருந்து இங்க எடுத்துருப்போம் இங்க இருந்து அங்க எடுத்துருப்போம் அண்ட் தென் ஃபைனலி இட் கம்ஸ் பேக் டு த குடோம் அதுக்கு வந்து என்ன கேட்டா எதுக்கு அதுக்கு பருத்தி கூட்ட குடோன்லயே இருந்திருக்கலாமே அப்படின்னா அப்புறம் நான் எதுக்கு சம்பளம் கொடுக்குறேன் உங்களுக்கு எல்லாம் அப்படின்னா சோ விச் மீன்ஸ் மெனி ஆஃப் த ஸ்டார்ட் அப்ஸ் கெட் பிளைண்ட் சைடட் பை தி ஐடியா ஆஃப் ட்ரைங் அசியூமிங் ஆர் த ப்ரசம்ஷன் தட் தே நோ எவ்ரி திங் தே டென்ட் நாட் டு கொலாபரேட் வித் லாட் ஆஃப் தி டீம் ஆர் பீப்புள் அண்ட் தே டென்ட் டு பி டூ கான்பிடென்ட் அண்ட் டூ ஷியூர் அபவுட் தேர் ஓன் ஐடியா and they are too confident and too sure about what the customer truly wants this illusion this uh, this which is usually an entrepreneur needs to have a strong conviction but not on all these elements but the conviction needs to be on building a great business that is the where the entrepreneur's conviction need to reside and not on every little things that you are executing along the way so this action bias just to keep the people busy you don't need to be uh, keeping them all the time busy and making sure that and, and assuming that you're doing something great you know being busy doing hard work working on the nights or trying to presume to be very very busy and producing hard work is an illusion that can get wasted please remember there is a there is a possibility of all these getting wasted if you do not have this feedback in loop Uh, this amina also she said that beautifully so unless you have this feedbacking mechanism from the customer unless you're truly convinced that you're delivering value to the customer all these becomes a waste of effort so in my opinion unless we are absolutely confident of value delivery to the customer how can you ensure there is value delivery see when you go and talk to uh, people when you go and talk to the even the customers when you just talk to them hey is this a good idea then you explain your idea and they will always say hey it's a wonderful idea super because they don't want to offend you 99% of the feedback that you get one on one is positive affirmative nobody will say this is useless your idea sucks nobody says that because generally people want to be good to you right so ask and you will be asking only in your acquaintance circle what was this idea how is this idea so generally people tend to be positive and appreciative of you but that is not the validation of a market or that is not the validation of building a great business the idea needs to be there has to be so the customer needs to agree to use it that's the second step of the validation see acknowledgement and appreciation is just one step 
The next step is the usage of it. Unless they use it, there is no validation that your product is doing anything to the customer. The third important step is habit formation. Are you able to build a habituation with the customer for your product or a service? Whatever be the product, whatever be the service, are you able to habituate? And the last and the final important element which gives you the feedback is, is the customer willing to pay for you? If the customer is not willing to pay for you, he's okay. He's, he appreciates it. He's willing to use it. He's even happy to form a habit of it. But he's not willing to pay for it. Sorry, you cannot build a great business. So each one of the step is very, very, very important for you to validate. Unless you're able to create a habit formation. For example, you take the examples of Swiggy. Why are the ideas of Swiggy is, or why, why are the ideas of Zometo are so popular? And even if they make millions and millions of dollars of loss, why do they get such a high valuation? Because people strongly believe if there is a habit formation, if there is a habituation for an idea, there is always a value that can be built at a subsequent stage. Unless the customer feels or feels the value, there is no habit formation. This is what uh, I, this is what this habit formation is called as a toothbrush effect. See, uh, there is a, there is a quote from uh, Larry Page: uh, Google keeps uh, acquiring companies every other day, and Larry Page he's the founder of Google, and uh, he has one simple parameter to identify whether this startup can be acquired or not, or this business can be acquired or not, or this product can be acquired or not. He calls that as a toothbrush effect, which means, what do you do with the toothbrush? You use it twice a day, morning and the evening. So unless a user consumes that service of the product twice a day, there is no habit formation with that product. So that becomes a very true uh, measurement mechanism for him to say, this is a habit formation product and this needs to be, and there is going to be a virality setting. The moment you form a habit, people tend to recommend, them. there used to be the, the, you know, that recommendation more than one, two, three. That is when the virality sets, and you spoke about it very clearly, when the virality sets. So this habit formation is very, very important. So these are the points that I would like to, uh, at least keep for all the entrepreneurs or the startups to uh, keep in mind that feedbacking loop mechanism, is there a habit formation mechanism? Is that being truly used? And fail fast in very, very short cycles in terms of finding out whether your future or the service or the product or your whatever you deliver is being consumed by the user. If you can fail fast and in short cycles, experiment with this whole idea, you'll be able to build a scientific process for success of the enterprise that you're commencing with. This is what I, and I'll, I'll just want to quote one important example from what we did. See, we as a company, though we are a services company, we incubate uh, lots of entrepreneurs in, your, in our organization for the, uh, basically for ideas, many ideas, and then we incubate that idea until it grows to a particular scale. And one of the ideas that we are incubating is a, is a complete vertical SaaS solution for a professional services vertical. In that, one of the, in the journey, uh, the team completely built a project management suite. In fact, because in a professional service organization, managing a project is a very, very important function. And they spent months and months together to build that project management suite. And eventually they figured out when they went to the customer, Nobody wanted to consume that project management suite or the product functionality from the suite. Why? Because they're already using a Jira or they're using a Azure DevOps or they're using a Primavera or some other product for their project management purpose. So the complete energy invested on building this became a complete waste. So, you know, had, had there been an experimentation cycle in a shorter cycle that had we gone back to the customer and asked them, took a feedback much earlier, probably we would have wasted all, the, probably we would have saved all the wasted energy. So this is one of the examples that I thought uh, I should share. And, uh, you know, the, the, the conviction of the entrepreneur or the leader, whoever is trying to build, it should be truly on the long-term business that they are going to establish 
rather than on the feature or that particular module or that particular uh, functionality of the product. There is no need, there is no greatness in holding on so strongly about that idea. If the customer likes it, you take it forward, otherwise you drop it. So this shorter cycle experimentation is the true uh, success recipe, in my opinion. Over to you, Rajesh. Thank you for this opportunity. Again. Thank you uh, so much, Maran. Uh, one thing which truly resonates with me uh, in what we have shared is the idea of wastage. We, we, we see wastage as everything in material form or in visible form, right? So uh, here, whatever in a startup or in a business environment, the author says, in whichever area where we are not learning and improving, whatever activity we are doing, which doesn't lead to a learning and improvement, he says it's a waste. It's very simple. That's a beautiful way of representing waste in a business setting, I would say, not even, even for our personal productivity perspective. So one thing from the waste perspective, when we see the lean manufacturing principle, they, 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 give, they give us a, one uh, interesting example. I'll, I'll share this example with you. In conventional manufacturing process, they, they, they have one set of process which is called batch manufacturing, batch processing, where they send products on batches inside the machines, it work and produce the end product. The biggest invention of um, Toyota or contribution of Toyota manufacturing system to the whole world is working on small batches. Toyota doesn't do the mass manufacturing of uh, their cars. They do it on small batches. They give uh, the example which um, they share in lean manufacturing usually is if you have 100 envelopes here, Please listen to me. You have 100 envelopes and you have to put a stamp in that envelope and write the address, put an invitation inside it and you have to courier it. How would you approach this? You would, there are two ways of doing it. One, write, put stamp in all the 100, 100 send it and then take every envelope and write the address then take all the envelope and put the invitation inside, then take all the hundred envelopes and stick it and then go ahead and post it. This is one way of doing. Another way of doing is take one envelope, stick the stamp, write the address, put the invitation, seal it and keep it separately. Which one you think is efficient? Can I get an answer? Which one you think is efficient process? Why? Yeah, now at introspection, we agree that this is an effective process. If we go and see our day-to-day -day activities or uh, how we approach all our business problems or marketing, sales problems, whatever it may be, we do not do, or they call it a single piece flow in manufacturing. They take one single piece, produce it and move it. We do not work on that model. We work on batch processing model. We do one thing and then go to next, then, to, then go, come back to this and work. This, I think, if, if you ask me, one biggest takeaway for me from this book is this. Work on small batches. Take one product, develop one future, test it for one particular market. The biggest challenge for the, for the startup, as Steve Blank quoted in the book, startups don't starve, they drown. It means there is so much an entrepreneur can do, but, we should, he, but what should he do? It means only working on small batches, as Maran rightly pointed out, the learning happens very quickly. One product, one future, one market test, whether it happens spontaneously, right? Rather than having 
um, five products targeting five different markets, having hundred different futures. I hope I am explaining this properly to you, right? So this is the one key ta key takeaway or lesson for me from this book. So now um, let's let's have some questions for uh, Mina and Maran. So let me start with Mina. So now you're from PVR Cinemas, one of the uh, biggest theater company in the in India, right? They own a lot of theaters. Now, with the with the arrival of Netflix, particularly during the pandemic, how do you think? Maybe you can take uh, take some concepts or principles from the lean startup. How do you think um, how how your company PVR Cinemas is managing? this entire situation because due to pandemic people, the footfalls to theaters are very very less are becoming very very less and people are consuming movies and most of the movies are also released in um, netflix platforms so how how do you manage this situation meena interesting question <clears throat> but i have to tell you one thing i'll correct here is more and people more and more people are coming now we had the best we announced the result and that's why i was just sneaking in my phone to see where is my growth now so we had the best quarter in last seven months last seven quarters in fact sorry not seven months in last seven quarters we are seeing more and more people coming for experience uh, now if you want me to take one principle and talk about how do i connect uh, or correlate or compare netflix versus uh, movies cinemas uh, we are 845 screens, 12,000 plus employees and entrepreneurs like me who think PVR is not uh, where I work, but belongs to my own skin. So uh, here's a measurability answer for you. How many of you here go for movies? Great. I think all of us. And I'm sure Maran also, because if he said Sandhanam's dialogue, that means he's a hard diehard movie fan or he's seen it in Netflix, whichever ways. How Big many time. of you? Huh? I said big time. Big time. I could just smell that in you, Maran. Now he's sitting here. <laughs> okay. How many of you went? Actually, my, my, do my daughter does uh, film technology. She's a cinematographer. She's doing a course. Okay. So she's every dialogue at home is with one movie dialogue. So great. <laughs> okay. So how many of you have visited cinemas in the last one year since it's opened? See, you got your answer. Measure. You, I don't have to say you saw it. So number of people going less has become more. Revenues which were lesser has gone more. Now to the core question is before pandemic hit the world and uh, unfortunately we were the first one to close because cinema was told to be the super spreader, super newser. But frankly research doesn't even say one case has come from cinema. We can't define, right? Today I was sleeping in my house. I got COVID from where? I don't know. Just saying. So pre-pandemic, we used to release 1800 odd movies a year globally. Bollywood, Hollywood, Tollywood, all the languages put together. So, and how many movies did you think is released in Netflix or any other thing? So I take this measure. If you take the big, big ticket movies, not more than 25, 30 in the last two years. If you take the mid-sized movies, again, very less. So what happened to those? If I count till uh, November, I have a count. It's 49 contents together in the movie. Series is separate. And now people are becoming more and more uh, greedy. They're saying one movie cut into five is becoming series so that people can stop. And that's also a pattern. To just tell you that's a pattern. They're cutting on a two-hour movie into five series so people can go and stop after one spot, go and come back. What happened to the rest? 1,650 1, movies. I'm measuring, I'm asking. Where is it? You know the rush we have in terms of listing the movies now? It's huge. It's huge. You can't even just imagine the next three years will not be one Diwali a year. It will be every month two Diwalis in South, in North, in West. And how much time does it take? I'll just show you the message. It was at uh, 
Seven minutes back, uh, Delhi announced 50% theater opening. And 6, 58 seconds, RRR announced the release date of March 8th. See how quick they are, you know, like really. So you can measure that 1600 movies are there. This is one. The second part, I was an avid and a very super fan of Netflix because the next day morning I didn't have to get up answer my boss saying I'm coming to office. I didn't have to invest my time on dressing. And I could watch movies more and more. The England government has announced all the workforce to come back to work from February. And I think global pattern is following. Once we come back to the set module, trust me and don't beat me from there. All your wives will start killing you saying sleep at 10 o'clock because morning I have to cook and give it to you. Now I can't watch. Right? You can't keep extending the work hours, uh, the movie hours. So Netflix uh, could be a alternate opportunity for people who are very, very reluctant to go out. I think that's also coming down because we've said, seen so much of our spouses and our families at home, we really want to go and now, <laughs> you know, see people outside. Let's go and at least see something. It's in our culture. It's in our culture to meet people, to see people. And so I think measurability is one module. The second measurability I would like to talk about is if a movie is produced and if it is released in theater, what is the cost of movie ticket in uh, Chennai, Satyam, anyone? That's my office, so 180, 190. And I watch it in the front, front, front three rows because I get it at 60 rupees and for God's sake, I don't get free tickets. So I think first three rows are okay. So I'm saying 180, 190. And if I take an average 60 rupees of the movie release goes to the producer or the distributor of the movie. Vis-a-vis -vis, um, Netflix gives them four to five rupees or max six rupees for a big movie. It is a startup culture for sure, a growing market for sure, an alternate revenue model for sure, but Netflix cannot take the cinema experience because we have seen it live. It's just the next level now. Thank you. I hope I answered Rajesh. Yeah, thank you, Meena. You have answered my question. But one takeaway from uh, what you have shared and my observation is Netflix movie watching, not just net Netflix movie watching, anything which we do online. I was discussing uh, with uh, Captain Venkatraman Ven uh, Ven Ven prior to this session. Online is more of a functional, uh, right? Um, so we do not have, uh, because of this lockdown, we do not have any option because of which we are consuming everything in the offline world. In the last one and a half years, if we observe, take school as an example, online learning as an example, online shopping as an example, online movie watching as an example, whatever it may be, we get bored after a, after a certain point of time. But the offline world, meeting people in the offline world, as Meena rightly pointed out, the communal experience is what social psychologists call, because we are, we are social animals, right? So if we want to see people, real time engage with them. So in a way, as Meena rightly said, movie theaters will not go away, not just movie theaters, anything which is physical, just because we have Zomato doesn't mean that restaurants will go away tomorrow. But one, one thing which offline businesses need to take care, even in the movie industry, if we notice all the second line, third line theaters, small, small theaters, there are no theaters now because of Netflix. Because of Netflix, movie theaters like PVR, Inox, they have upped their game experientially. All those small players have moved away. So that is one thing which is happening in all the offline industry, could be restaurant or whatever it may be. So now we can take some questions from the audience also. That question, um, maybe we can ask Maran to answer. Uh, can we open uh, the forum to the audience, Captain? Anyone here? Would you like to have a question? You have a question? Oh, my God. So good evening, everyone. So this is Parkavi from Savita School of Management. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. So I have a question to Mr. Rajesh Srinivasan. 
So, sir, uh, you have said that uh, in before knowing there is a demand in the market, we should not like uh, develop our product, like new product development. But most of the even large scale business and small scale business, they have launched their product and then only they have actually created a demand. Like for examples, like Glow and Lovely, uh, before 40, 50 years and all, none of them uh, have used such a creams because they are using gram flour and turmeric only. But see, but now in, in rural villages also, like uh, small, small kids, girls and all using the, those creams. And uh, uh, one of the biggest example is Geo. Like uh, before uh, five to six years, like Airtel only launched uh, 4G. After that only Geo have launched. And on that time, there is no such a demand. Uh, people like, why should we, why we should give such a cost for this 4G? That is not uh, like no need of it. But to create a demand, Geo actually changed the consumer's behavior. So now, uh, before uh, four to five years and all, while I was studying in school and all, like we will use the use uh, net and we will off it and we will keep. Even now, uh, we will use one GB for uh, one or two months. But nowadays and all, two GB, it's also it's not actually, uh, uh, and not only large businesses, uh, even small businesses also, like after launching their product only, they are creating demand, like uh, skin craft. And uh, where it's there and all, I, I think so skin craft uh, come 2017 itself, they have launched their product. But in this pandemic only due, um, because of influencers and uh, the social media marketers, they have actually created a demand. Now, most of the girls, uh, even um, teenage, like, like we can create, we can actually create a demand now, sir. Yeah, even, got your point, Ma. Got your point. Yeah. You, 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 want, you want to know, do we need to do test testing or we can create a, demand, a product and then uh, go to the market and test it out? That is your question, right? Yeah. See, there are two ways to look at things. One is conventional businesses. If, For example, if you are starting a restaurant tomorrow, uh, you do not have to do much of testing because people, you can see, um, you, you can always look other businesses, how they are doing and use it as a research process. You can visit 10 restaurants and see, um, you can even go and uh, have food in a restaurant and really test. And you can talk to 10 friends because it's a conventional product. It's not a new product, right? So most of the principles which, which uh, was discussed in the lean, uh, lean Startup is for new businesses, disruptive products, which is not available in the market. Most of the times what happens is we call, um, we, we st call startups, but those are conventional businesses. But let's, let's go back and see, prior to Facebook, there is no social media app at all in the world. Prior to iPhone, there is no smartphone in the market. At that point of time, how they would have developed? For example, um, uh, Facebook was launched in a Harvard University. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is launched amongst his closest circle friends. He saw that adoption. Then that became a thing inside the college. Then it naturally moved away from the college and it has become mainstream. If you notice, it has followed some he has focused only on early adopters. It's a breakthrough product, right? So even the cream which you have, which you have mentioned, it's not a breakthrough product. It's, it's already, people are using it. What kind of innovation you are trying to make? Are you just, there are two types of innovation we need to understand. One is a breakthrough innovation or a sustaining innovation. You are taking an existing product and try to make some small changes and trying to introduce in the market. Here, you have already data existing. You have research done. There are already visiting bus uh, existing businesses. I mean, in the sustainable innovation. But if you are developing something which is breakthrough, a breakthrough product which is not, not at all avail available in the market, I think the risk is high. The, uh, the level of uncertainty is very high. This, these principles and concepts will become relevant there in that setting. Hope I have answered your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh. Um, so we'll take some questions which have come online. There are about 525 people watching the program online on all our social media channels. So we'll take some of the questions. We got a lot of about eight, 10 questions are already here. 
but i think we have time for uh, one or two questions we'll just take quickly two three questions and uh, uh, we will see where it goes so may I take this question to mr uh, maran um, mr maran uh, this is a question from mr rajesh from coimbatore he says sir i am a student uh, i want to uh, start up a company in the financial services sector uh, but going by the uh, paytm experience in the last uh, few uh, very sure in the last few uh, months the stock has fallen by over 50% so is it a good idea to get into this kind of a financial uh, tech space uh, particularly which is uh, which has got a lot of competition or you advise that we should get into a space where we have a monopoly well uh, thank you very much for that question i wish you good luck for uh, your entrepreneurial journey see again paytm is a business which has reached the stock market after almost uh, 10 years of a decade of journey and uh, what example you can take from paytm is it was valued at 1 lakh crores and it became 60 lakh 60000 crores and if you look 60000 crores itself is not a modest amount so it's a huge success by any standards it was not a success to the expected standards of that was more about a buoyancy and the stock market bullishness and that cannot be taken as a parameter for judging whether the paytm is a successful or not paytm is a truly successful model this is uh, just to give an example on the paytm part and the other side if you talk about the fintech fintech is really huge there are thousands of thousands and thousands of slivers where you can enter into the fintech and even as recent as uh, a few days ago few weeks ago there was a fintech company called as ipopay which was funded a couple of millions were funded for them they are into this uh, payment aggregation business they have a pos especially targeted at the, as the tier 3 and tier 4 rural markets so still there are many segments within the uh, fintech space which is completely underexploited there is nobody present there if you look at and, and and for the tier 3 and tier 4 that kind of a, a village markets this ipopay they have come up with a beautiful idea where they are making it as the complete financial platform for that particular shop because there are there are millions of shops in this country who do not have any software or a pos or any uh, application they use so in these cases uh, there is still a huge market available out there to exploit and take advantage of and you can even create a lot of markets so the digital payments are still a significant paltry percentage of the overall bank payment transaction in this country so keeping this in mind you still have a lot of space in fintech but you have to be careful in what you're choosing which space you're choosing and which sliver you're going to attack which uh, target market on the segment that you're going to attack so if you keep this in mind you can still be a successful entrepreneur thank you thank you thank you mr maran <clears throat> there is another interesting question which actually mr maran also referred when he talked about he talked about the feedback that he gets which people get when you uh, push out a prototype into the market the feedback may not be necessarily true and uh, it, people will possibly you were mentioning that people will just they don't want to offend you and so they may give a good feedback so there is a question that relates to that uh, i think i'll pose it to mr rajesh because he's been into market research as well sir how do one how does one do a product impact study which is genuine uh, and get a genuine correct feedback from the uh, target audience because most of the par- uh, product impact study we find are actually overrated yeah uh, that's a good question so uh, as i have told you get one simple way of answering is th- is this get out of the building as steve blank told it means it literally means put your product to the outside world and see how people respond that is one one way of doing but even before product development your answer is very generic so you have not mentioned what type of product you are developing so that is why i am also answering in a very generic way now today in the in the digital world the research process can't be one year or two year i'll tell you why social media if you use it diligently every entrepreneur or a marketer it is the biggest social 
or focus group happening live whatever people share there you can take it as an insight okay so whatever we for example today's movie release if we notice earlier it used to be conventional reviews we see it in anand the vigdan or any magazine and then decide decide whether to go after it happens after one or two months but today immediately after a movie release we know whether that movie is good or not and based on that we decide to go to the movie theater or watch it in netflix or don't even watch it any product development or anything which we want to develop if we use social media diligently not just we we most of the times we consume social media right we are, we are we are the consumers of social media but if you wear the hat of a marketer and browse the social media you will get enormous amount of insights let's take uh, you you know a platform called quora q u o r a it's a question and answer platform whatever you are trying to develop any product which you are trying to develop if you go and type that product there it will show you the question and answers happening in real time the conventional even in this book the author says don't ask observe conventionally what we do as marketers is we go and ask people whether you will buy this product or not eventually if we ask our friends they will either say yes or no yes to please us no they are if they don't like us that is a bad practice it means don't ask observe observe in social media go to question and answer platforms like quora and see whatever related to your your product development see the question and answers there it gives you real time insights that people are not biased they are not your they are not our relatives right relatives or friends real time insights without doing any conventional marketing research we just need to fine tune our research mindset and need to do it even youtube i would say anything which you are for example you are trying to develop some vitamins go and see uh, uh, type uh, those uh, type of vitamins which you are trying to develop in youtube and see the type of content and see how many views it has gathered how many people have liked it and go to comments session and see what people are communicating about that maybe this is not directly relevant but it is giving you a lot of insights right real time insights we can gather in today's digital world that is really i think this is the uh, biggest advantage for a marketer because you don't have to rely on conventional market research process whether uh, just to take a decision whether your product will not will your, whether your product will work or not thank you thank you thank you i think uh, uh, there was one question to ms meena but i think you already answered it that was about uh, how, what is your strategy for a post pandemic and how you are planning to pick up your business i think you already told that you know how people are already waiting in queue so yeah, what i still want to tell them post pandemic i gave the answer but uh, please remember there is pvr there is satyam and there is meena so come and there is anatha and there are other movies <laughs> <laughs> so please come and watch more and more movies so i have to see more audience now thank you sir Sure, sure. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us. I think that's all the time we have. May I request Group Captain Vijay Kumar to come on the stage and uh, hand over a memento to the distinguished speakers out here. And Mr. Maran, your memento is due with us. So, we will definitely have you with us next time. Now, the distance separates us. So, so yeah. So, this is <laughs> a book. Thank you very much. Very nice. So, this being a you know read and grow session, we are happy to have you. More books given to you. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate it. And to Mr. Maran, uh, as you have seen, uh, we have a memento on your behalf, and that is we actually go around uh, the place all around us in the vicinity and provide masks. on behalf of people like you who come and spend, spend your valuable time with us we give them rations we give them uh, we organize vaccination camps out here so all this is because of people like you who come and spend your valuable time with us so thank you so much for that we will do that on your behalf the next time
Thank Too you late. so much. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. MMA and the staff members of uh, MMA who have been supportive in organizing this. And uh, one more final word of appreciation to Meena and Maran for quickly acknowledging my request for joining in this initiative. And your experience and insights are definitely useful to all of us. Thank you so much. And thank the wonderful audience also for coming by even during this pandemic. Thanks for your wonderful question. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be Thank safe. Very much. All of us are like your part of back it. home safe. Good night. Thank you. No, sorry. Sorry, Marun. Yeah, sorry, we missed you. Yeah. Marun, please go ahead. No, no, no. I said thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. I'll stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.